Well, hello, hello, hello. Uh, I have decided to create a series of what's called passive income. And I would say there's different ways as we know that we can create that passive income. However, one of the things that's most important is where do you start, right? Because there's so many different ways uh, that yes, believe it or not, you could be going to discuss making money. And serious is going to be in real estate, right? Because we know that's one of the greatest wealth that you can produce uh, in any type of century. It doesn't matter, era. I mean, money has always been there in real estate. Now, there's different alternatives in real estate, right? Uh, it all depends, again, in your personality. So what do I mean? So what we're starting with this series is going to be about real estate, but a little bit different to what you might be used to hearing or probably even learning from other seminars, which most of the time when you hear, you know, investment, um, it's about single family homes, right? Um, and while I think this is a phenomenal, uh, you know, uh, property type to invest on, there's other alternatives that you can invest because right now, single family homes were pretty much, you know, purchased in very large amounts by major big companies, right? Um, and if you do recall something about real estate, uh, the I buyers, right? And who are those I buyers? Well, we know that Zillow is one of massive one, right? Um, Zillow has been buying single family homes, uh, I mean, by thousands in big chunks of portfolios, you know, make it more difficult for regular investors like you who wants to get started, or maybe you want to continue adding to your portfolio, but you can because these massive hedges, you know, and, and funding uh, capitals, they come in and they just, you know, pick up by, by the thousands. So it's making it harder and harder for uh, smaller investors to really get into the single family home. So one of the things that I like to get started and it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, and again, I do believe in single family homes. So if you have a good opportunity, jump in and grab it. If it's real worth the investment and you've done your comps. But if not, one of the things that I done and I have seen some of my investors do also, uh, in my group is getting to what they call the mobile home or as we call it manufactured homes. So that's what we're going to really, um, you know, just uh, dive in in this, uh, you know, episode because I'm starting to see also that uh, the massive companies out there are jumping into the market. But in this case, a little bit different. What they're doing is they're actually purchasing um, large amounts of parks so they're not really interested in the single manufacturing homes they're interested in community parks right because that way they can come in and just purchase 50 100 200 300 mobile homes in one single park um if you're not familiar with the manufacturer home uh, you know, type of uh, investment, it's a little bit different like I said it is to you know the actual you know uh call it, you know, a uh, traditional home, uh, whether it's a wood frame or whether it's maybe a CVS, right? A concrete, you know, block or even a brick home. Um, it is different. Uh, you know, manufactured homes have a very bad rap, just to say in that way. Um, a lot of times there's been expressions uh, that just kind of undervalues communities. And you probably have heard these kind of expressions. They're called the trailer parks. Um, but those trailer parks are a cash cap. <laughs> so there's a lot of good opportunity there to really make money. Now, it's like any other investment. You have to look at the condition of the property. And I just came across a, uh, an article um, by a well-known, you know, um, investor, which I'm sure you heard. It's uh, biggerpockets.com, right? Biggerpockets.com. And I really, when I saw this article, I said, I have to really share it because it's not only about my experience, not only personally, because I have invested in manufacturing homes, that's correct. Yes, it is. Uh, and also because I have other connections with other investors that also do mobile homes. Um, and on top of that, um, I think this is just a great opportunity. Now, it's not for everyone, again, and the reason why I say it's not for everyone, because it's true that manufactured home versus a single family home does not usually gain so much in, in equity, right? And the reason for that is because especially the problem with uh, manufactured homes, by the way, that's where they're called after, after any home that was built after 19, I believe 76, they're called manufacturer homes. Prior to that, they were called mobile homes. 
And, you know, we picture mobile homes because they came with wheels, right? Well, remember, wheels are actually removed when they position, um, you know, the home into, uh, you know, the land. Um, so it's not like you can just pull it like really on a trailer. Um, so there's a misconception of that. I just wanted to kind of throw that to you and, and share my thoughts with you. But anyhow, uh, to make, you know, uh, this, this episode really, uh, you know, valuable, what I'm trying to share with you is that, if you're starting or you have thought about, um, is it really worth it, Liz? You know, do I really want to kind of jump in into something that you're not familiar? Like I always tell people, we are here all to learn from each other. And the more you learn, the more you invest in your education, especially in anything you're going to do, it's going to be worthwhile. I believe it's worth jumping in and buying a mobile home that you have no clue what you're looking at, uh, what's the value, because you really just maybe read a few articles and watch a few videos and you think now you're ready. Sometimes you might not be ready. That's right. It's always, I always recommend getting a mentor, getting a group of training, whatever it takes you, a community that can support you who has been there before you. Okay. So with that said, by the way, I will be sharing below um, in actually in the description box. Um, if you're actually uh, watching this through my YouTube, because I do have a podcast. So uh, I do share this audio uh, through my podcast. And if not, I will have a link for that too. Um, this article is phenomenal. I want you to, if you have a chance to read it, it's like it's in bigger pockets, it's in their blog section. It is called the largest landlord mobile home parks. Okay. I repeat that again. It's under the blogs blog section and it's largest landlord mobile home parks. Um, I think it's a phenomenal article. I really like it. And again, this is why I'm sharing. But the point here is I'm also going to be sharing another second art, um, uh, link. And that one is actually for a, a it is a specialized. This is, a, this is a mentor that all he has done is actually just investing, investing, investing in mobile homes for multiple years. He's an expert. He's a pro. He knows what he's doing. And if you're looking for the right investment in your education, um, definitely I will highly recommend them. And, um, and and I think it's well worth it. I really think so. Again, you never want to be blindfolded. You always want to get so much information from. So let's get started with this. What has been my experience personally, um, besides, like I said, my clients who have um, been investing also in mobile homes. Number one, it's tricky. You have to learn what you're looking at. And the most important and the biggest difference that I want to share with you in this episode is there's different types of not only mobile homes, because we've got single and we've got double wide mobile homes, okay? And double wide, it's more assembles to a regular house, okay? Which is really nice because you have that width, which is nice to be inside a space where, um, you know, you might not feel like you're really enclosed in a box, in other words. Now, some of these homes, let me tell you folks, they are unbelievable how beautiful they're inside, especially the new models. It's really, really amazing, especially anything built after like the 2000. It's just outstanding, really, what these manufacturers have done with these homes. They have gorgeous kitchens, bathrooms, uh, you know, bathtubs. I mean, it's just stunning just to see some of these homes. So some of them, you pretty much, you don't even feel like you're in a manufactured home. It feels like a real house. Now, by to clear something here, because I see a little confusion with module homes and manufacturer homes, they're two separate things, don't get them confused. Module homes, Yes, they also manufacture in a, in, 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 you know, in, in, in a factory. Um, and yes, they move on wheels, same as a manufacturer home, but it's very different because the way that they actually compose the whole house is not in a single piece. It comes in, in different pieces to form the entire module home. So I wanted to kind of, kind of share that real quick with you um, because there is a difference and they're more expensive. Yeah, that's right. And they do actually gain a lot of equity uh, module homes. Uh, going back to manufacturing, which is what this episode is all about, I really think that uh, based on how I see rents increasing um, here, especially in the United States, um, I believe that it's a very affordable way for many people and families to be able to have a nice three bedroom, two bath or four bedrooms. Um, and you know, most of those homes are less than $1,000 a month, which is like, you know, 
it's stunning because where do you go to get a three, two or four, you know, three uh, for that kind of price? In the majority places that you go in community parks, that's about average of what's going to cost them between a mortgage and actually the lot rent. Now, let me kind of define what I just said there. There's manufactured homes that you can purchase in a community. The beauty of a community is one, most of them, they give you extra security. Sometimes they might have a security guard or patrol. Sometimes they don't. Um, others definitely have pool, you know, an area. They have community clubs. Some of them have gyms. They have, you know, um, tennis courts. So they take care of the lawn. They take care of, uh, you know, everything that has to do with the pavement, the streets. Um, so it's really nice because it's, it's, it's really almost like an HOA community um, and you pay them a monthly rent for your land. That's what happens. And you actually own your own manufacturer home, which you obviously finance separately, or perhaps you can pay in cash and get a better deal that way, right? Because we know cash is the king no matter what. <laughs> Hopefully you agree with me on that one. So what happens when they invest in these type of mobile homes, what happens is a lot of people would pay them through finance and also pay the lot rent. And like I said, it's so reasonable to live in, in a spacious, you know, um, you know, a uh, house. Um, and yes, I mean, a lot of people have concerns with, you know, especially, uh, you know, states like Florida and, you know, even, uh, you know, Georgia, and we have, uh, you know, other places like Alabama and obviously Texas, where we, well, come across a lot of tropical weather with hurricanes. Now, a lot of these homes have anchors. They have anchors. Yes, they do. They're, they're, they're not, you know, built by cement, but the anchors usually under the ground and it's sufficient to probably sustain a hurricane one or even two beyond that well you know it's going to be harder um but a lot of these homes you'd be surprised how sturdy they are really they're very well built now in that even including homes that i have owned for all the way from the 60s to the 80s of manufactured homes and they were very well built so i think this is a great great investment for anyone who's thinking out of the box and saying okay liz Right now, single, single family homes and multifamily homes are so expensive, especially duplex. I mean, I see the prices in duplex right now and they're just way, way too expensive. Um, so this is a great way that you can invest at a lot more affordable. And I want to finalize, by the way, and if you have got to get some value out of this, by all means, I would appreciate if you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel. It always helps to grow my channel, obviously. And also like and give me a thumbs up. I love hearing comments. Um, I believe that uh, you know, right now I'm trying, like I said, share as much as possible with you based on my own experience and what I have had through my also uh, investors that I help with, um, you know, type of work I do. Again, I am an accounting. I do specialize niche on, on the real estate industry. So going back, I think the most important thing here for you to take out of this, uh, you know, uh, session, if you want to call it, is the fact that if you have been thinking about it, just educate yourself. It's like anything else, any other investment. The more you train yourself and the better community you have, the better chances you have to succeed. So again, mobile homes, it's a little bit of a different game to a single family home. Like I said, they might not ever, you know, gain so much equity like a house, but they still can get equity. All right. So that's a myth that people say, oh, no, you buy and it's like a car. Uh, I like I said, I have heard really, um, you know, bad comments about, you know, manufactured homes. But that's not true, especially, especially if you own the land. That's right. So I believe that for starters, having a manufactured home purchased on any uh, really on a community park it's better because you can buy these manufactured homes for less than thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars that's right thirty twenty thousand of course it depends on the condition right of the home uh, you know if you have to rehab the property which a lot of them do require you know before you can have you know a new tenant move in then in that case yeah you can buy them as cheap as i heard some people buying as cheap as five thousand dollars right that's almost unbelievable but it's true now yes you're looking at a much larger investment you know to fix a home like that but again once it's fixed 
These homes, depending on the area, they can range anything from five hundred to a thousand to twelve hundred dollars a month. So the actual investment that you're going to do in doing the rehab, all right, is going to be mostly less than in a traditional home. Okay. Now again, you need to learn a little bit about this type of investment because. There's certain things that you need to learn of what you need to look at in a property, not only the interior, but also the exterior, right? And again, location, location, like any other real estate, where is it located? And like I said, makes a huge difference, sure. Do you want to have full control over the property and nobody, you know, supervising, nobody, you know, screening, no one giving you any headaches, no HOA? then your next step is to buy a manufactured home that comes attached with a piece of land and that's what i did just recently in one of my investments that i just actually sold and uh, i call them a flip yeah we flip also manufactured homes and that's exactly what i did so on my very first manufactured home it was in a 55 plus community so i was able to experiment what was to go through that type of uh you know situation uh, and how you need to get screened by the HOA uh, in that in that case I had a tenant who was over the age of 55 so there was no obstacles of being approved because of that even though I was younger I was the I was the investor I was the one purchasing the manufacturing home but the person the tenant who was going to live was over the age of their requirement so there was no issue okay very pretty community it was only like i think we only had like about 25 manufactured homes so it was a really small community and uh, just to give you an idea how much the landlord can increase that within a 10-year period i remember coming in and paying only 425 dollars a month that's right 425 bought this manufactured home for only ten thousand dollars had to do a little rehab i had to completely replace the sub floors in that home a lot of other repairs were drywalls and you know doing different things around the house um i think my total investment after repairing everything was close to maybe fourteen thousand dollars that's it that was it and then other than that it was the lot rent for 425. that's unbelievable right but here's the thing with that they know you have that community and that monthly rent to pay and a lot of them you have to pay separate also your water all right um but it includes like i said sometimes you have a pool sometimes you have security so if you like that kind of living then that's great that's a great place to invest now personally after having you know another experience recently like i said we're doing a flip in a manufactured home and actually owning the land it was a completely different experience I personally liked it a lot more. Um, and I think it's great for people who are looking to just do fix and flips, <laughs> not in non-traditional houses, but manufacturing homes, but also, uh, you know, maybe becoming a landlord because this is all about passive income. So what better way than to have an affordable home that you can repair um, and make it in moving condition and have a good screen, you know, tenant and if you're going to tell me, well, you know, Liz, I don't want to worry about toilets and, you know, headaches and they're calling me for electrical problems or, you know, things that go wrong in the property. Again, you can have a property management, you know, take care of your mobile home. Sure. Why not? You could have somebody locally that lives nearby. Then maybe it's a handyman that every time you need to have a repair, all you need to do is contact that handyman that hopefully it's going to be, uh, you know, price in a reasonable way and it's going to do a good service for you you know so there's a lot of different ways that you can manage how to really invest into mobile homes and again some people like in this article that i want to finalize here says world world's largest landlord enters the mobile park arena now this is not good news like i say if you plan to invest in small communities where maybe it's less than 50 or 100 you know uh manufacture homes you still have a good chance there but if you're looking into larger unfortunately now we have so much competition in this market that's right in the last like five years it has been increasing a lot and now we have one of the largest one i'm actually going through this uh, article right now um and i couldn't recall i think it was the uh oh there it is the blackstone group 
Now, the Black, Blackstone Group, if you recall back in the recession time around 2008, 2010, around that time, I mean, they came in and they wobbled all these type of single family homes at real, real dirt cheap prices, right? When the, when the last bubble that we had during that time, I was during that time, I do recall very, very well. It kind of feels like it was yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, and I recall that during that time, I could see these big companies coming in and just like I said, picking up these really dirt cheap houses. And now after all these years, I mean, these homes have increased, you know, substantially. I mean, they increased by almost, you know, 30 to 40% in equity, unbelievable. So with that said, this company is actually coming out after, yes, that's right, the manufactured communities, now the larger ones. So there's still a better chance for the individuals who are planning to get a portfolio and doing something like this. But again, you need to contemplate, do you want to own the land, which is what I usually would recommend. But if you don't want to worry about having to take care of the grass and, and what other things could happen around you know, the property, then a community park would probably be better, but now you're paying a monthly lot which obviously you include in your monthly rent. So one way or another, I do believe the manufacturer homes, um, they're a cash cow. That's just my personal opinion. And for many other people that I have shared with, that like I said, they're active investing in manufacturer homes. Again, educate yourself, all the information I have shared with you. I always believe you do your due diligence and you always, always research the information again educate yourself, get mentors, people who've done it before you. And that way, hopefully you can avoid some of the, you know, traditional errors that you can, because in some of these trailer homes, yeah, you have to be very cautious. They're falling apart. <laughs> and, and after they're really in bad, bad or damaged condition, it's very hard to get them repaired. Um, so you have to be cautious about that too. There's certain things, like I said, very different to a traditional house. Um, so again, I hope my information has helped you somehow in value. And like I said, I'm going to continue a sequence of this passive income, you know, series because I really want to have a typical person out there who's really thinking about, I don't have a possibility of this. I don't make enough money or I don't, you know, I'm going to need $100,000 to get started. And that is not true, folks. It's not true. You can get started with very little money. Like I said, my very first investment in my manufacturer home, I paid $10,000. Yes, it was cash. Yes, it's accessible. Yes, you can come with a partner and maybe you can do half and half and do the repairs. See what I'm saying? So there's a lot of ways that you can do this. And again, I'm going to be sharing on the description box, uh, not only, uh, you know, the, the, the article, but also the fact that I'm going to be sharing that other connection that I have that I think that source is going to help you really get the proper, uh, you know, training that you need. And somewhere around here in the right, left, in the corner, um, if you're watching the video versus to listen to my podcast, there are going to be additional videos. Um, that a series that I created also not too long ago talking about passive income, but only strictly about real estate. And that had to do with REITs, real estate investment trades, right? Also with land, just purchasing land, or in this situation, uh, you know, what we call tax liens. So if you like, feel free, watch those. And, um, and I hope this has been, like I said, helpful to you. Like, share, it always helps. And I will be seeing you in the next sequence, like I said. And, um, and you comment, absolutely, by all means. I love hearing from, from all my uh, subscribers and followers and understanding what, uh, what you're looking for. I mean, and, and I know it's kind of tricky, but don't worry. Just push forward and at least start with your very first property. That's what matters the most, you know? So anyhow, I'll be seeing you in the next episode. Bye-bye.